continuing on with our R Markdown custom CSS video thing, um, one of the cool things you can do with various other things is reference your headers with um, custom IDs. So one thing I like to do in some of my R Markdown documents is have hyperlinks to certain section headings, especially if it's a very long document. So one thing I might do is, you know, at the bottom of my um, document, I could do like an A tag where the href is um, hashtag test um, back to top. I think this is probably what's going to work, but uh, I know I've done this before, even if that's, my syntax is incorrect for this, but we'll see. So one thing I also do have right here is um, now you can see in an R Markdown document, the pound symbol is the comment, but because this is an, in a CSS code chunk, it will actually work as you intend, um, and it will actually still function because the, ha the hashtag word is actually the ID selector for CSS. But the way we actually give IDs to certain section headings like this, uh, I'm just gonna do for section headings. I'm sure you can do this for other things like um, a custom divs, yeah, we, we, we can easily do that for custom divs, like in here, um, you can set ID equal to something, um, because in the braces, that's actually what's the CSS or the custom options. So next to my H1 header here, I have R markdown. The way we assign a custom ID is through braces, pound, and then whatever your uh, ID is, so in this case, test. So what I have is that this is saying, hey, if you have the ID of test, the color of your font is orange. Now, I already tested this, and it does not change the font color of the actual H1 header. I have this one set for, for red. That's what will change the color for the H1 header. What this is doing is this is changing the text of everything inside um, that H1 heading and below it until it hits the next heading. So our next H1 heading. So let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna knit that. So that changes all of the text underneath this H1 header until the next H1 to orange. Because two columns right here is that H1 header. Now I have this little link here that is linked to just the ID selector, hashtag test. If I click it, ah, it takes you back up to here. So in this case, you could actually have like say above or next to or something, um, each of your headings, a link back to the top. I mean, if you have a floating table of contents, like in the R Markdown out or the HTML output that you can do, um, like this, you know that that works just as just as well. But say you didn't want that, say you just wanted this, that's possible as well. A lot of different ways you can play with this stuff. You could also, if you had it in like a book down document, you could do this to any place in your book down document, which is another use case I found for it, is that if you have a link to your appendix, if you have a link to another section or a specific uh, reference point or figure, you can actually link to it by doing ID selectors. So in this case, um, very, very good use case of using custom IDs. And when you're assigning these IDs to like um, an H1 header in R Markdown, it's braces, pound, word, and the same thing for the divs over here, um, I think it might be the same where you just do ID equals, the same sort of syntax that you normally would do for um, uh, CSS, but I'm not too familiar with this. In that case, like this is a little bit more confusing. If you're gonna do some more custom options, I would personally stick with just just write the straight HTML code with the, the options in the div tag because it would just be simpler to read and less like obfuscated. So in that case, I would probably just do that. But in the, in, in the example, um, yeah, custom ID selectors.